We live in a 3D world, and a new renaissance of stereoscopic cinematography is attempting to bring that world to life on screen. With stereoscopic filmmaking comes an entirely new set of creative techniques, rules, and editing practices. Media Composer now includes a powerful integrated stereoscopic workflow, and in the videos that follow, you'll see how to take advantage of it. But let's begin by taking a look at how our eyes work in stereo. When a human observer looks at a scene, her two eyes focus and converge on a specific point in that scene. This point of convergence can change repeatedly as she examines various objects in the scene. The result is two separate images of the surrounding world. Since human eyes are on average 65 millimeters apart, a distance referred to as the interocular distance, each eye sees the world from a slightly different perspective. Parts of the scene that are hidden from the vantage point of one eye are visible to the other. This hiding of objects from one eye is referred to as occlusion. Collectively, these differences in perspective and occlusion between the two eyes are called disparity. Now when the human brain takes in the left and right eye views, it can use the disparity between them to fuse the two images into one and reconstruct a three-dimensional representation of the world. Of course, this isn't the only way we arrive at a sense of depth in our world. The natural perspective lines visible to a single eye are enough to give our brains a good estimation of the distance of objects. In fact, beyond about 200 feet, the differences between what the left and right eyes see is so slight that our brains judge depth for distance objects solely on perspective. Bringing all of this to 3D filmmaking, you might be tempted to reproduce what happens with our eyes using film cameras instead. Of course, like most things, the reality isn't quite that simple. Firstly, it's extremely difficult to get two cameras with their bulky chassis 65 millimeters apart. A common solution is to use a beam splitter with one of the cameras at 90 degrees to the other. This can introduce various artifacts such as color tinting from the deflecting mirror and spatial misalignment. Other systems use two lenses in a single camera chassis, although this creates its own significant constraints on the cinematographer. To mimic the human eye, you might then choose to converge your camera lenses on an object in the scene. This is sometimes called towing in the cameras. The problem with this approach is that it introduces keystone distortion in each of the resulting images. Because each camera is viewing the scene at an angle, the resulting 2D images are skewed. Trying to combine the image as is will produce major mismatches and audience headaches. Now that's not to say you can't shoot like this, plenty of stereographers do, but the resulting images will need to be corrected with a corner pin in post. The generally preferred method for shooting 3D is to shoot parallel. Your cameras are positioned close and alongside each other, just like they were for the toe-in method, but this time they're angled parallel to each other. That way they capture the same perspective shifts that the human eye would, but without the keystone problem. In post, we can slide the two images together until a certain object in the scene overlaps exactly in both the left and right eye images. This is called adjusting the convergence. Now, when we view the image in stereo, anything in the scene that was forward of the object we converged on appears to come out of the screen and into the audience, called negative space, while anything behind the object recedes behind the screen. The object itself is positioned exactly at the theater's screen plane. What's great about this is that the convergence point can be adjusted for any given shot to place scene objects in the appropriate theater space. Media Composer includes tools for quickly adjusting convergence and for scaling up to eliminate any border crop introduced by the adjustment. Of course, there's a whole lot more to consider when shooting and editing 3D, but by now you should have a grasp of some of the basic principles behind stereo vision and 3D cinema.